We seek a sign of the Lord our God. From the depths of the earth to the heights of the heavens, let's go let God's sign be known to all. A young woman shall give birth to peace, hope, and joy. A young woman will give love a name, Emmanuel. God is with us. Let us, in love, kindle the light of the Lord. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus. come. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And together let us pray the Collect of Purity. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, your faithfulness is magnified in the coming of your Son, in the long-awaited birth of the promised Messiah. May we, like Mary, proclaim your greatness as we rejoice in our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Our first lesson is a reading from the second book of, the, of Samuel. When the king was settled in his place and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to the prophet Nathan, Look, I'm living in a cedar palace, but God's chest is housed in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go ahead and do whatever you are thinking, because the Lord is with you. But that very night, the Lord's word came to Nathan, Go to my servant David and tell him, This is what the Lord says. You are not the one to build the temple for me to live in. In fact, I haven't lived in a temple from the day I brought Israel out of Egypt until now. Instead, I have been traveling around in a tent and in a dwelling. Throughout my traveling around with the Israelites, did I ever ask any of Israel's tribal leaders I appointed to shepherd my people, Why haven't you built me a cedar temple? So then, say this to my servant David, This is what the Lord of heavenly forces says. I took you from the pasture, from following the flock, to be leader over my people Israel. I've been with you wherever you've gone, and I've eliminated all your enemies before you. Now I will make your name Israel, and plant them so they may live there and be longer, no longer be disturbed. Cruel people will no longer trouble them as they had been earlier when I appointed leaders over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. And the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make a dynasty for you. Your dynasty and your kingdom will be secured forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray Canticle 15 in unison. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. 
for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed, and Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second letter lesson is a reading from the letter to the Romans. May the glory be to God who can strengthen you with my good news and the message that I preach about Jesus Christ. He can strengthen you with the announcement of the secret that was kept quiet for a long time. Now that secret is revealed through what the prophets wrote. It is made known to the Gentiles in order to lead to their faithful obedience based on the command of the eternal God. May the glory be to God who alone is wise. May the glory be to him through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel Gabriel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. 
and good morning to those here and to those on Zoom. We have reached the fourth and final Sunday of Advent. Our journey is nearly complete. The day of his coming is nearly here. On our journey, we have taken a look at various virtues or ideas or qualities that we need to incorporate into our experience as followers of Jesus. We began with the notion of hope. We then moved on to peace. And we ended last week with the concept of joy. Today, we wrap it all together with the idea of love. As I was preparing this, I had a lot of different thoughts as to what I wanted to say. Prayed a lot to try and figure out what was, should be said. And one thing kept coming to me, and it was a song. It was released in 1995 by a singer by the name of Joan Osborne. And it's called One of Us. And in the chorus, it starts with a, a question. What if God was one of us? Well, today I'm here to share with you and share with you the answer. He is. He was and he will be. God chose to become one of us. I shared two weeks ago when I was here that I have in my old age become somewhat of a follower of Francis of Assisi and his theology. And the theology that we talk about with Francis is something called incarnational theology. And it really focuses on the birth of Christ as kind of the central message of the Christian faith. If you remember, Francis was the first to create the creche. He was the first to set up a manger scene. And we have certainly followed that tradition. That was back in the 1200s. We're told in the Gospel of John, in the beginning, there was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt with us. That's what we celebrate. That's what Christmas is. It's a rebirth of God with us. Jesus came to us to demonstrate how loved we are, how much God values us and treasures us, that we are sacred as is all his creation. That's the good news. That's what the gospel stories tell us, is God loves us, and we are sacred. For me, as for Francis, and many of the Franciscan followers that he has, this is the most sacred time of the year. Traditionally, I know in most Christian churches, the most sacred time is considered to be the Easter season, the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. And that's significant, no doubt about it. But for me, Christmas is when God put our redemption in motion. Christmas is when God became one of us. Love was incarnated. And that calls us to be challenged. To be challenged on a daily basis to be like Jesus. To be love. Jesus came not to change God's mind about us. Jesus came to change our minds about God. Last week, 
when Don gave his sermon, he gave us a new slogan. He said that our glass isn't half empty, it's not half full, it's refillable. Spent a lot of time thinking about that. Thank you. Because in order to refill, you have to empty. You have to let go. You have to give away. You have to do something so that glass can be refilled. And I've thought a lot about what that meant. And for me, my experience here at St. James is that this community knows how to do that. And the word that I use for that is love. I can only reflect on my own experience here. My first time in this church was four years ago in August. Father Don was out in California. By the time Scott was here as a supply priest, I didn't know that. And I was a stranger sitting towards the back because I'm a former Catholic and that's where we all sit. And as I sat back there, I didn't know what y'all did here. This was new to me, right? Became very familiar very fast because it wasn't all that far from what I had grown up in. But I was very timid and kind of sitting there going, I don't know what to do. And that's when I experienced my first example of love. Jim Julian made it a point to come across the aisle, shake my hand, and offer me peace. And I felt very special. The second Sunday I came, I got to experience the flying vestments. And any of you who've been here when somebody new is here and seen Father Don run out from the sacristy to go greet whoever, that was my experience. As I was in back of the church still, and will be on a regular basis, Father Don made it a point to get to that back door before I did, in order to shake my hand and introduce himself and to ask me some questions and made me feel at home, to feel loved. And throughout my time here over these four plus years, what I've seen over and over and over again is love. It's what attracts us. It's what binds us. It's what keeps us coming back. Because here's where we come to be refilled. Now our challenge is once we're filled and we walk out those doors, how do we empty ourselves? And that's really what Jesus' message is all about. It's really not a whole lot about walls and rules and, and rituals. It's about loving. It's about loving God and loving your neighbor. And then he spends a lot of time telling us who's our neighbor. And the answer is real simple. Everybody. Everybody. That's who we're called to love. That's what we're called to do. And in this Advent season, I hope each of us can take the time to stop, to be quiet, to listen, and to allow ourselves to be refilled so that when we go back out into the world, we're a full glass ready to be emptied. Let us prepare this Advent season to be refillable, to resolve to empty ourselves for others, to not just carry the message of the gospel but to be the message of the gospel.
and to remember Francis's words. Preach everywhere. When necessary, use words. God bless us all. Amen. Amen. Together, let us stand and affirm our common faith as we say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us join our voices with Mary, who celebrates God's goodness and sings of God's blessing for all who are poor and oppressed. Eternal God, we pray for the world that our warring ways may be overturned even now through the birth, death, and resurrection of Christ, for nothing is impossible with you. We pray for all first responders and medical and hospital staff caring for all who are sick or injured. We pray especially for all patients with coronavirus. We give thanks for all researchers and those involved in producing the vaccine that will bring healing and protection for your people. We pray for the mission of your church that we may proclaim the good news of the age as we rejoice in the gift of our savior. We give you thanks for our bishop elect Paula Clark. May you bless and guide her by your Holy Spirit as she leads us into ministry and mission. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Gretchen and Jeff Beck, Sue Bennett and Mike Hippler, and Sue Berna, that we may proclaim your good news of Jesus to the world. We pray for all who suffer, that we may feed the hungry and lift up the lowly through the power of your holy and life-giving spirit. We pray for those in need of your compassionate touch, remembering Julie, Alex, Gary, Nancy, Jim, Therese, and Josephine. Bring them your healing and well-being. We pray for your creation that we may safeguard its well-being from generation to generation to your honor and glory. We remember before you those who have died and pray for those who will die today, that they may rest with you eternal in your kingdom where there is no end. Be with those who find this time of year difficult because of loss or grief. And gracious God, we thank you for the gift of love, Emmanuel, God with us. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we magnify you, almighty God, forever and ever. 
Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one whose mercy endures from generation to generation. Faithful God, we know that you are always there to guide us, yet we often make plans without listening to you and discover that our human agendas can drown out our ability to hear your will for us. We repent of these faults and turn to you in love. Forgive our offenses and pardon our sins, that our lives may magnify your holy name forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, by the faith of Christ, your sins are forgiven. Blessed be the God of our salvation, whose mercy is everlasting. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, 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 peace all, and peace to all of you on Zoom. Well, as we prepare our hearts to come to Christ's table, joining Mary's joyful song, our souls proclaim the greatness of the Lord, and our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. With humble and grateful hearts, let us bring our offerings to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. And now we give you thanks because your Son, our Lord, was awaited by the prophets announced by an angel, conceived by a virgin, and proclaimed at last to all people of every race. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim the glory of your ev forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. And we give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his, in this, in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed Mary, St. Joseph, St. James, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen christ our passover is sacrificed for us Therefore, let us keep the feast. And now, let us join together and offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Jesus, because we believe that you are present in the most, the most holy, holy sacrament. sacrament. We, we love you above, above all things, and we desire to receive you into our souls. Since we cannot at this time receive you through bread and wine, come into our hearts. We embrace you because you said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of you. Unite us wholly to you, because nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Do I take bread? By Christ, the bread of heaven. Luke, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 
Now the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. We're seeing the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. To the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Like the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. I mean the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Paul, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. John, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And Peter, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Magnify the Lord and rejoice, for nothing is impossible with God. The blessing of God, who creates, redeems, and restores, be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Do not be afraid, for God is with you and will strengthen you in your journey through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Well, good morning, all. It's good to, to see you all on Zoom. I'll see you in a little bit. Good to see you all that are here serving. Good to have you here. Uh, birthdays this week is uh, Virginia Sheldon, Finley Melindy, Christopher Wills, and Catherine Shire. So Katie Shire. So let us pray for God's blessing on these birthdays. Oh, God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on Virginia, Finley, Christopher, and Katie. We ask your blessing on them uh, during these um, challenging days, but uh, be with them, guide them, protect them, keep them safe, and may they grow and learn and uh, find favor with others as they share your love and get their glasses refilled. We give you thanks through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now uh, we're going to have a special word from Mike Pierce on our stewardship appeal. So, Mike, you want to step up to the, the lectern. And I added four more apples to the bunch. <laughs> well, while it is a season of celebration at our Christmas, we are at a time of our annual uh, looking at pledges, looking at our financial stability, and what our opportunities are for this next year. Um, the graphic that Sue, I'm sure Sue can put the graphic on the on the wall. I don't even know. I don't know what the number is. <laughs> They're not right. They're we not have right. more. There's more. There's more. So this was midweek. Why don't you step on the mat so I don't there there if you're on oh, there. Yeah, I'm there you sorry. go. Okay. Uh, yes, there have been cards that have been added to this, families that are added to this. And it's very critical not just that each of us do as much as we can, particularly for this year coming up. It's been a rough year. We know we still have part of the rough year next year. But not only do we need to do everything that we can, but we need to get more people being part of what we're doing. And so while our theme is to make every apple all count, the capitals that are in the tower are commitments that are in. We still have a lot of apples that are laying around on the ground. Uh, we got to make those apples count. We got to get those picked up and gathered as well. And so it's very important, not just that we fill our cups, but that we refill the number of people that are involved and sharing in our ministry together so that we can accomplish the goals for this next year that we really, really want to be able to do, even at a time of difficulty. Thank you. And the uh, vestry will be meeting tonight. We'll have a, a brief meeting. Uh, we'll be talking about the upcoming uh, services. Um, and uh, to let you know, uh, because again, COVID is having uh, fun with all of us, uh, we do have to have an annual meeting, but it will be very, very brief. We will give you updates on that at this point um, later on um, uh, after the first of the year. Um, but we, we may try to do it right after um, the Mass or uh, and make it a very abbreviated uh, virtual coffee hour slash annual meeting. We just have one order of business to take care of. But uh, we hope that uh, you will join us uh, in that annual uh, meeting, virtual annual meeting. And I'm thinking that we'll probably ask all of you to give us a virtual recipe, potluck recipe. And we'll create a virtual uh, potluck recipe book that what would you have brought had we been able to have our regular annual meeting? So we hope that... Uh, You'll participate in that as well. And Judy, I want your, I think it's your funeral potato casserole. It's really good. She said it's, I, it got named because it got taken to a lot of funeral uh, luncheons. So, um, so Judy, I want that recipe. All right. Uh, Christmas offering 2020 uh, to support fish in St. James. Uh, as you know, uh, many, many Americans, millions of Americans, are out of work, and I talked with Mary Graziano at Fish. Uh, they basically are seeing double the number of households uh, needing food, and some that have never, ever gone to a food pantry before. So uh, you can give online. 
So uh, go to our, our website if you can give uh, for the Christmas offering. Our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day schedule, uh, it is up on the website, and there are new Zoom links because they are different services. Uh, so if you are going to watch from home, make sure you click on those links that are on the web page. Uh, and uh, just to let you know, for Christmas Eve, uh, Luke and Mike will be uh, presenting a traditional carol concert uh, with some music beforehand around 7.30, and then the Christmas Eve Mass will begin at 8 p.m., and then we will have a Christmas Day Mass broadcasting at 10 a.m. Now, for those of you who signed up for uh, take-home communion, uh, your, your kits are ready. Uh, and so here is the schedule. I will be here till about 3 o'clock today, so if you want to drive by and get your kit, please do so. Uh, Monday, I'll be here from 10 to 1, and then Carrie will be here Tuesday, 8 to 2, and Wednesday, 8 to 2. Uh, I have, I think, two, two more deliveries that were requested. So uh, thank you. We've, uh, we'll probably have close to 90 people at this point. Um, participating in communion on Christmas Eve. If it goes well and you like it, um, we will do it again. Um, we're trying something new, and it's always fun to try something new, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, you know, especially during these times. So this will be the first time in 10 months that we will be able to take communion together as a parish family. So uh, in your... Uh, E-news uh, e update, we sent out a special one. Uh, you can mail Christmas cards uh, to Nick Bennett, uh, and his address is uh, also in the bulletin. And then uh, if you could send a Get Well card to Gary Banfleth. Uh, how is Gary's arm doing? A clean break, but no surgery but a permanent cast will be put on. Okay. Oh, very good. So we'll keep him in our prayers. And Aiden had his birthday, correct? He's three now, and he wants to be a fireman. That's pretty cool. All right. Uh, uh, the uh, office hours for the holiday, I pretty much gave them to you. Uh, so uh, the parish uh, will be open this coming week on Tuesday and Wednesday from the 20... Uh, the 22nd and 23rd, 8 to 2. And then the following week, it'll, uh, the office will be open Tuesday, uh, the 29th, and Wednesday, the 30th, from 8 to 2. Uh, it'll be closed on the 24th and the 31st. Uh, I will be out of the office December 28th through January 2nd, but I will be available by phone call if there are any pastoral needs. So my phone number is in the bulletin, and it'll be available uh, on eNews. So if you need me, um, we can, uh, I can arrange to see you or assist you in any way. Uh, gift cards are available to order online, so you can check that out. And that went out in e-news update as well. I think that is it for now, so uh, have a good week. I heard Wednesday was going to be close to 50, and then Christmas is going to be about 20. So it's Chicago. As they say, if you don't like the weather, wait 24 hours. So Christmas blessings. Uh, go and get your, spill your cups out of love and refill them, especially uh, on this Christmas uh, Eve and Christmas day. Blessings. Amen.